What is going on, Nissan Nation? From all things Nissan here in our studios to wherever you're watching us around the globe, this is your Nissan Nation, and I'm your host, David Boyd. And uh, tonight, you've been on the pod, you've been on the Nissan show once or twice, I think, Kelly. But uh, yeah. Kelly, well, she's busy sharing the stream right now like crazy. But um, we are talking Nissan Xterra tonight, and uh, this one's kind of close to home for us because, well, for one, we've owned m many Nissan Xterras, and two, You've yet to see this thing, Kelly. Like, Kelly's looking at the screen you're looking at, so this is kind of her first impression of anything. Well, if she looks up. But, Sorry. But um, this is Kelly's first impression of, of anything about it. And I wanted to get her her thoughts about this thing, for one, because um, she loves her Xterra. Uh, and, you know, it's just a, it's a woman's point of view from just my goofy guy's point of view all the time. Uh, what's up, Joe Taylor? Everybody on here, once you, you guys know what the hey Joe. like, share the links, please. It it means a lot. And uh, so Kelly's seen the little image here, so this is the first thing she knows anything about this Xterra. And um, yeah, and uh, what's up, Trav? Yeah, Trav and them would love to have this thing down in Australia. Um, but I wanted to get into. I was gonna do a video. What's up, David? Hey. I, was, I wanted to do a video on this thing, but I, I thought let's just do a live stream because. For one, I mean, there's only so much you can talk about this thing in a five to six minute video that, that we already don't know. But I wanted to bounce ideas off you guys, and I, I wanted some live live feedback. And, uh, you know, it's a chance to hang out with my, my lady, my BFF, as it were. Um, oh, thank you, Joe Taylor. Oh, hey, there's Carrie. Carrie. Carrie Beasley. Hey, girl. So, Kelly, why don't you tell them a little bit, if they don't know, what you're driving currently? I am currently driving an 09 Xterra. It was an X model. <laughs> it was. It's uh, the KGB 4X model now. Um, it has an ARB locker in the rear that we don't, we haven't even hooked up yet. Um, let's see. It has MK84s by Niztec mm -hmm. with a two inch lift. It has BFG KO2s, 33 um, inch tires. It has... 12, they're they're, they're um, 285, 75, 16s. Whatever. It's easier to say close to 33. <laughs> um, shut up. So let's see what else does it have. We have white knuckle, white, or white knuckle sliders on it. Mm -hmm. We have a HEPS Designs drop-in roof rack. We have an uh, Iron Man 4x4 awning on it. We have HEPS Designs Molly uh, panels in the back. Yep. Um, I help design. Who do, who do we do our tire or who do we do our seat covers through? I don't, uh, know. I don't even remember the seat. Some covers. seat cover people. Uh, weather tech in there. If you if you don't have weather tech in your rig, you're missing out because honestly, they do not sponsor my truck at all. But let me tell you, my truck is always messy, and it's amazing to have those. My my carpet is saved. Um, yeah. So it's what's up, JQ? Oh, and an insane fab rear bumper, hefty front bumper. Yep. Um, like this thing is like, and I'll find a picture and put it up here in a minute. Yeah. But uh, this thing is like tricked out, and it was like what she kind of wanted. Like I've mm -hmm. I've always had Xterras for God twelve more years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I've always loved the Xterra. As soon as it came out, I wanted one. But at the time, I was a little more broke, couldn't afford it when it first came out. But <clears throat> the plan was always I wanted one one time or one time one day. Once upon a time. And uh, we made it happen. We made it happen three times. <laughs> We've owned we three of them. We owned a 2000, a 2001, and your 09. Yeah. And had probably Nissan not killed the Xterra, we'd probably have a 2020 in the driveway right we now. We probably would. Instead of something that Nissan doesn't want to know I'm going to buy. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> That's another channel. That is a whole other channel. <laughs> but I was curious, uh, right off the bat, I'm curious. Guys, give me some feedback of your initial, because Kelly, once again, doesn't know much about this thing. So mm -hmm. I'm curious of what your uh, your uh, feedback is. What's up, Carrie Beasley? You're actually home tonight. Well. For you. Uh, JQ85, let's see, do we think this Xterra will end up in the United States? Well, we're going to get into that in a couple minutes, because I, I do have thoughts about that, but I, I've i talked, I've done a few videos on this thing of, yes, that we know this is a Terra, a Terra. It was basically the Gen 3 Xterra. What we were going to see is an Xterra, they 
couldn't build it here or financially. So, you know, you take the idea of the Xterra, you take it to a market that might, you know, want to purchase something cheaply. And it's been actually been, the Terra has been pretty, a pretty big hit over in, in the uh, Asian market. And it's, I want to say if it's not in China yet, I can't remember if it's in China or not, that it will be in China very soon as the Xterra, if I remember right. And the Saudis needed something. Uh, you know, Nissan has the uh, the Safari Patrol, the uh, the classic looking patrol. They have the new the new uh, V8 model patrol, and they needed something a little smaller. They have the X Trails in Saudi Arabia, but you know, X Trail it's it's you're not you're not taking that thing out to the dunes and have. I mean, I guess you could, but you know, it's not intended to 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 have fun. And the Saudis, believe it or not, they like to go out. They like to camp out in the desert they like to go just have fun in the dunes believe it or not there is a little bit of rock crawling you can do in saudi arabia and they like something to have fun with now they don't have california on their side which kind of helps the rest of the world sometimes versus 49 other states here in the union that would like to have something <laughs> fun they don't have to deal with California. Anyways, wow. but um, and wow. not, nothing against California. I wanted to move there at one point, and thank God I didn't. I wouldn't have met <laughs> Kelly here, but that's beside the point. But it's a whole different life. It would have been <clears throat> yes. But the Xterra sort of is back, and I told you guys, and I've even said this recently. The Xterra name is not owned by Nissan. There's a race about it. I think the last time me and Danny were together, we talked about this. It's actually a race. It's kind of like a triathlon style race. And they actually own that name, Xterra, and Nissan licensed to use that name. Now, I, I wouldn't think they probably want Nissan to kind of license that name back or get that name back at all because I have a feeling in, you know, when Nissan took that in 99, search engines, yes, there was the internet. It was still in its infancy. There wasn't a lot of, a lot of long-term thinking about, hey, I'm just going to look up Xterra and, you know, might be somebody that was into the race. And then it's it's 400 pages of, of idiots like me who's modded theirs or, or done something fun with their Xterra. <laughs> so I imagine that they wouldn't be super excited to go, hey, let me lend that name right back to Nissan, you know, for a small fee. But a sneaky way Nissan could get around it, and I mentioned this in my video last night, was put that little dash in there. A little dash of something, right? And... <laughs> It sort of gets um, uh, it sort of gets them out of the uh, the it gives them the Xterra name sort of but give them a little wiggle. And the funny thing about it is everybody and their brother uh, either they I've seen so many times over the 15 years or so I've covered Xterra that people put the dash in there naturally. Why? I have no clue. It's not because in any Because X and T aren't supposed to go together. Well, but it's not in any any uh, old Nissan ads. There's nothing about that. Or they capitalize the T too, which drives me freaking nuts. <laughs> that Just was drives actually, me nuts, man. It's actually in a girls a girls exterior group that I'm in like uh friend Kristen Short actually commented. She's like they lose all they lose all uh uh integrity when they put the X <laughs> in a capital T era. It's well, like but, pet peeve. But so there's a lot of reasons why, you know, that they put that little dash in there. And some of this is obviously it's just speculation, but it does make a lot of sense legally why they would do these things. They want they want to use the name Xterra. And I've, I've had a, a few people hit me up privately and go, Dave, why why are they using the name Xterra? That, that was an American vehicle. And it's like, OK, Nissan sold the Xterra from uh, Gen 2 all the way through to 15. The Gen 2 was sold in Saudi Arabia in those markets. They love the Xterra over there. Don't get me wrong. Now, they look a little different. They look weird with no rack on them. Some of them did get racks over there, but some of them didn't. And I remember putting, I, I used to deal with, in the plant, I would deal with, uh, um, I would deal with uh, mirrors, mirror caps on these things to, that go to the line. They get slapped on the trucks and go down the road. And it always struck me funny when you would you would see the normal one, you know, objects look larger, larger. than they, they appear. And then, all of a sudden, you'd see, and, and I'm not being disrespectful i don't know what the lines mean the little squiggly lines in there in 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 that text it's but, language well no i know it's a language but <laughs> I, but i i would be like oh okay this is for the saudi one and then you would the badging on it would be slightly different they'd always badge them like four liter instead of like se or s whatever the trim was at the time um and it, you'd see them going down the line and it was really cool but it's called marketing yeah I, well, that <laughs> but they, so they, there's a history of this name in that market. And I've, I've preached this hundreds of times on the shows that, you know, people want to fuss about the Pathfinder name is like, well, that's not a Pathfinder anymore. This and that 
The name alone, Pathfinder, is a billion dollar property. It's worth a billion dollars instantly. The name Xterra, believe it or not, is worth a billion dollars because they've spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars marketing these names. So there's value in them. To, it's, an, it's an easy thing. It's low hanging fruit. You just put it, put it on something. Now, this thing is, is very Xterra like. Um, don't, don't think that it's not Xterra like. Now, there is a three row seating to this, which you would like. I think in this size of a vehicle, it's kind of goofy, but it's not for our market. Um, it's for a different market. I'll take it. <laughs> and so we'll get into that here in a couple minutes too. But once again, guys, smash the like button. It helps Google and it helps new people find the show. And if you're really kind, smash the all the little buttons you want to. There's uh, there's there's little smiley faces down there. There's even one with a little dollar sign to help keep the, <laughs> the pirate ship here going if you so feel inclined. But I won't talk about that again. So the Nissan Xterra, Kelly, your initial like you're just seeing this for the first time. Let me let's let's pull up a, a, a picture of this thing, and and we're going to uh, here we're going to go through it with everybody. Now this is Nissan Saudi Arabia, uh, their uh, their website. So we're going to go to vehicles. Yeah. Look, they got a Maxima, and it's weird that that would be gone a soon. Sunny? A Sunny, which is really cool. There's the there's Safari Patrol. Oh man, if we could only have those here. All right, X Terra. So there it is, Kelly. There is your X Terra. And initially, what is your views on this thing? I think it's a little soft. Well, there you go. That was the podcast and show everybody. <laughs> Kelly said it was soft. Um, but no, like, like seriously, what, what do you think of this thing? I mean, it can't just be soft. The show's over if it's just soft. I think it looks very Pathfinder-ish for me. Mm -hmm. And Pathfinder, over the last... Ten years? Yeah. Ten years has gone soft. Like, I don't know how else to put it. Like, our Xterra, that, that those of us that own them in the States, they're more aggressive looking. Even unmodified, they're more aggressive looking. Um, they look like they can take on a trail. This one, with the wannabe, like... Wanna be <laughs> wanna be like what do we call skid plate skid plate in the front? Thank you, that's it. It reminds me of the one that's on the Pro 4X Titan, which is unfortunate because it just it isn't there for what it is. Um yes, Joe, that's a great way to put it. It looks like a 2022 Pathfinder to me. And of course for the Mixera, like we talked about, you know, they don't care about the rack, but the rack is what makes the Xterra. Now granted we know several friends that have taken their racks off, and it looks different. It's cool. My, it's mine what looks they... my old Gen One looks completely different with the rack off. Yeah, and no offense, but I prefer it with the rack. Um, I prefer racks too. Wow. <laughs> um, and I live with this one all day. You guys think this is just for show? It's not. <laughs> um. But no, it looks it looks a little too defined, I guess. It maybe that's the best way to maybe put it. Maybe refine. Yeah, that's a little it. too classy refine, for you, maybe. You. Yeah, a little too classy for me. Uh, for one, we know those step rails would be gone. Like, well, of but course. that's on the on the tr on the previous Xterra. That was the yeah. Case you could too. get step rails on all of them. Um. Uh. Yeah, Anthony, that's it. It needs some more rugged, rugged to it. Like it's just not rugged enough for me. I. It's a little too smooth. Well, but you know the the I, I think, know that's what we're looking at in this world, but I think some of the ruggedness of the previous generation Xterras was you know you got those kick out panels, the the side plastics and stuff that kind of made it look different. And um, obviously, obviously now the old style bumpers are a thing of the past. Like yeah. even the Gen Two sort of went away from that old style front bumper. Um, aerodynamics play a big key in these things now. Uh, they need a lot of cooling in, the, in these things. Uh, sorry, I'm being hit up. Anyway, so they need a lot of. Thanks, Trav. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, they need a lot of aerodynamics with these things. Now, this one, the the motor option in it is really uh really kind of scary. But if you look at this, it looks a lot like the Armada and the kind of patrol, what what they call the patrol, the way the glass is cut in the back of it now. There's definitely a design cue that Nissan wanted to stick with. Now, it's got the goofy fog lights thing that's Nissan's new design cue. They're shoving in everything. This sort of fake racy looking uh, air dam there that doesn't do anything. 
Um, but even stock Xterras back in the day didn't look as rugged as we look at them now because we're looking through rose-colored glasses when we look at Xterras because true. we're used to looking at an Xterra that we've built or we do wind Windrock and we have hundreds of them show up to these events and, and there's not a stock one around there. So maybe initially that's some of the – that's some of the the – kind of soft looking to it i guess i can see that because even so when i see stock ones when i'm driving down the road i go oh we could help you so much like <laughs> you could be so much prettier than you are um prettier than it's soft my definition of pretty with xteras is different than maybe most girls pretty with Xteras. i'll, I'll, I'll go with carrie that. gets that carrie understands she knows yes carrie soccer mom very Jeez, much Car soccer mom. carrie's always worried about the rear she talked about the rack. No, I know. Yes, Carrie, we're gonna get in. Let's <laughs> let's uh let me uh let's configure our X X X Stara <laughs> because or X Terra. All right, so if it loads up, uh no, I don't I don't need any uh, help there. All right, so I went through this earlier today, and obviously these are uh this pricing is titanium is, is different. Um, I've said let's for do a conversion. I've said for quite a while that. I believe they're starting out at twenty nine thousand is what is what it comes to. But Kelly, will, Kelly, will give us the hard facts on this thing. Um, but so there's a few models. Obviously, you can get two wheel drive or four wheel drive. They have the SE, the Titanium, and then they have an SE Titanium and Platinum. Now, I've reported on this for quite a while that I believe the next generation Frontier will have a Platinum edition. I think that that's something Nissan really wants to go with now is their Premier Edition, calling it a Platinum. No more S or SEs or anything like that. Go people for whatever connect platinum and the name titanium and those things to I don't know to status I guess, um, but the 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 basic SE here you're getting 17 inch uh, wheels you're getting a, a seven inch screen which isn't you know it's tiny anymore I guess considering but you can get a nine inch screen on this what'd you come which up is with about so your SE you're looking at where it says 102,499 that is approximately 27,000 right. For your base model, so and it goes up to go ahead and do so what's the top one thirty six one thirty six yeah. Well, why that one's thirty six two eighty two, so it's really not terrible. Right. No, so the idea, the pricing of this thing is where the Xterra was, anyways. Yeah, it was. I mean, I think it's a little bit better. Nah, you get a pro. Top. You could get a pro for X. They were retailing about thirty six, I think, when they I were. They were up in the forties. Nah, no, nah, they were retailing at around thirty six. I think thirty seven, thirty eight towards the end. But so comparable to. But you. But uh, mind you, what was the last year of the Xterra? Fifteen. Fifteen. So you're talking five, five years, years ago. ago. So yeah. the fact that it hasn't really increased in price, even though the cost of the U.S. dollar well, has gone up. But some of that is these are built in a uh, in their Indonesian plant. So there, there is definitely a, a cost with it. And uh, so I had asked Nissan quite a while ago, probably two years ago, I, w I was in talks with Nissan. And I was like, they, they did a, uh, oh, what they, do? they they took uh, the Titan to Morocco and the Armada to Morocco. And they brought uh, the Intrac uh, from the Australian market, I believe. I believe that's where it was, or it's the England market, English market. And then they, uh, they brought the uh, Terra, and they did the they did like a week long driving through the desert and stuff. So some some friends of mine that are, that are American uh, marketing through Nissan were there, and I asked them. I was like, "Why the the Terra? Why why did uh, Nissan kind of skip our market with this thing?" And plain and simple, she said that. And, and we're talking the Terra now, the previous generation of this. <clears throat> she said it was not the quality was not where the American market needed it to be. They. Uh, that she thought it was just the 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 touch services and stuff were just a little cheaper than feeling and stuff and and that the American audience wouldn't wouldn't handle. But this at those prices now, granted, we're I know this is not what we a lot of people call the Terra. You have to get into it no. to, to do that. Okay. Um, this is um, the pricing of this thing would lend itself to that less quality. Uh, Oh, Kelly, you know, Kelly's got to go through the colors. Sorry, just looking. Um, but the, the, the pricing would be um, right in line with the quality, I think. And I, I think that it, the old Terra lends itself to everything you need, nothing you don't. Now, once again, design, don't, we're not talking about design for this. I'm just talking about the package as a whole. Um, now, you get a little turbo diesel in the, uh, the uh, Asian market, which, you know, they don't, 
they wouldn't ever do that here in the United States. But this one, Kelly, is going with a four-cylinder. Now, um, and here, I know Carrie was asking about, about the, rear. the rear of this thing. Um, the, 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 the rear design of this, you look at the, uh, the X-Trail, what they call an X-Trail, or uh, our Rogue. It's all going to this similar design. This uh, and I like it. I think the I think the tail lights and stuff look nice. I don't. I'm not a big fan of Xterra written like that over there, uh, which is Nissan's new thing as well. They're That's they're insane. really seeing that everywhere. They're really pushing to stretch the name out like that. And on the Rogue and stuff, I don't mind it. But uh, the the little dash in the X just takes it out of, away from me for some reason. It just <laughs> I I don't know. No, and I'm not bitching about the dash in general. I mean just the way it's printed right there. But just, you are. Kind of takes me out of it, but there is your their rear carry, and we'll get into the inside of this thing because they have a nice 360 view of it. Now, part of part of the old Xterra Club um, is oh, it, it just doesn't look rugged and stuff. And look at all the little sensors on this thing. That's right, you're going to get all the little fun safety shields and lane you know lane warnings and and you know pedestrian warnings on this because. If America is going to it, the rest of the globe eventually goes to the same state safety things we have. And you can see the little the little shield here where that's where one of the I don't know if it, I think it's LIDAR that they're using for uh, for sensing uh, their sensing camera. Um, but the only thing I really initially don't like about it is this uh, whatever goofy air, like air, air vent. Yeah, the Titans were doing this and they finally did away with it. Patrol. And Armada has been doing this for a while. I'm just not a fan of it. I don't think it it doesn't lend itself to being any more classy than than anything else. Uh, the side steps and everything they don't look bad to me. They're very I mean for what they're supposed to do they're very capable. You know they're and they're not big and Nerf bar like that's real bulge and you know that draw attention to themselves. They they blend itself right into the vehicle. Uh, let's see now Kelly was going through the colors. Uh, Kelly. You're not going to get a lot. That's the thing with these these markets. You're not going to get a lot of color options. I don't know. Um, brown is terrible. I would probably assume this metallic gray would be up your alley a little oh, yeah. bit. That's yeah. a good looking color. And this color, I do believe, will will be in the United States on the next frontier. Uh, might be just a little bit darker, but we are going to get that. Uh, obviously, pearl white is pearl white. It's real pretty if it loads. Um, try another color. There we go. The the black's pretty sharp looking. Um, I'm not a fan of Chrome at all. Like I do not, I do not like that. Chrome at all in my vehicles. And, uh, the V motion grill in this thing is not too bad is if they would just do away with the Chrome in the middle. The one thing I am surprised at that Nissan is using their old style burger logo. Still, this has been in planning for a while. Why they haven't went to the, the kind of thinner mm -hmm. textile and, and, and gotten with the times on that. I have no idea. Uh, wheels on it. I'm not. I'm not a fan of those brushed aluminum or or whatever they are wheels. Well, talking about the burger though, is the burger a worldwide yes. reimagination? Yes. It's so it's not it's, a it's, it's a not a U.S. only. Mm -mm. Okay. It is global. Um, the door handles. I I would have thought if you really wanted to kind of keep in line with the Xterra, you would have done the old fashioned blended into the mm -hmm. the pillar here. Uh, but these do not bother me by any means. I mean, their door handles are kind of door handles. Uh, I, the back end of this thing is where I think it really shines, minus that little dash. That dash. <laughs> I like the kind of fakish skid plate they've got going on there. It, it just looks it looks cool. Um, if I remember right, these get coil in the rear, too. They're, they're, uh, they're not leaf spring, if I remember right. And that's, that's me going off. Uh, it might be, can be scary sometimes. It might be leaf spring. Um but overall, it, the outside of it's not too bad. I know a lot of people are initially bitching that they, oh, it doesn't have the classic, the classic roof and everything. Well, guys, that classic roof will not pass crash testing anymore in the United You're States. Talking about the level. Dude. Yes, so that's why that was the initial reason why Xterra was killed. They, they blame it on fuel economy and everything else, but they could not get that thing to pass uh, the latest crash testing. So it, it was just either spend millions of dollars for a vehicle at the time that they were selling maybe twelve hundred a month. And we can all say, well, they didn't advertise it. Or you just do away with it. And it was easier for them to just kind of do away with it. And they did bring Frontier up to uh, to standards because they sell six to 7,000 of that a year. Now, let's look on the inside. Now, 
The inside of this thing, I you can fuss all you want about the outside, but I think the inside is getting close to everything you need, nothing you don't. The old style, the old style Xterra. Now, why I say that, there's not a lot of fancy buttons. You're still getting your dual climate controls and all these things that kind of which is standard these we days. We feel is a standard standard deal, but uh, that this one here's got the I believe that's the nine inch screen in it. Yeah, it's the platinum, so it's got the bigger screen. It's got push button. It's got Nissan's new steering wheel design, which is kind of racy looking. You're getting actual tax. They haven't went completely digital with the screen, though. You do get you all your little warning lights and everything will be in in the the digital. Um, I do like the two tone color of this. I, I think that's nice. Now this and for us off roaders, this would show dirt like oh yeah, like crazy, but. They offer they offer a different color. See if it loads up for you us. Have to burn your butt. Well, in Saudi Arabia, definitely. But I like the dash. I think the dash is a clean design. Like I don't. It's, it looks like a car to me. I mean. Well, it, but think of the market. the The SUV market shifted from cars now to everybody wants SUVs. Right. So some of that market they expect some car like touches in this thing. Well, and I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying that's what it reminds me of. Is is a Maxima type interior. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, these are to fold the window? seats back. No, they're seats. they're for the seats because the seats will you push a button and they just flop down. Uh, they don't power back up, but it's just a button that you can do that. Oh, they don't. No, and if I remember right, the locker button is actually down here now, if I remember correctly on the Terra. But you get in vents here, which is the Xterra doesn't mm -hmm. have that, which is super nice. And on this model, Kelly, you would like this. Look, you get roof vents for air conditioning. So it, it blows back because see, the third, see the third row back there? Yes. Um, but we all know those third rows are, unless you're a, a little person or a person of like five years old, they're not intended for anybody truly to get back there. Like it's a, it's a, for Kelly, it's one of those snob appeal things of going, of going, I have seven row or I have <laughs> seven no, people seven. in my, and, uh, but ultimately even, even in the, even in the Armada, it's not a comfortable seating okay, position. But let's be honest, softball season, it would have been really, really nice to have a third row several times when I get a text from mom that says, Hey, can you take my daughter home from practice or pick my daughter up before practice? Right. So but we're this we're we're looking at this through Xterra glasses. If my Xterra had a third row, I'd be happy. Everything you need, nothing you don't, man. Well, I need that third row. <laughs> <laughs> so oh it makes man, it to the need category. And, and guys, I'm not ignoring your questions. I trust me, I will get to them in just a second. But uh, I like how they're hiding the the seat belts. I that noticed cool. this earlier today. That is super nice. I like that feature. So, do you think that that will come to the models within the United States? Well, we'll find out on that in just a minute. Uh, it looks like the side bolstering on these seats is really nice. It mm -hmm. looks like it's kind of like, you know, this Tightness. is sort of like a mini luxury SUV is the market they're going after. It's a capable four wheel drive and guys, it's the same selector. There's the same little knob. They've upgraded the knob, but there it is. It's the same four wheel drive knob that you're used to basically two wheel drive, you know, four high and four low. And then you have your locker options in select models. Uh, let's see if I can get. I can get one of these to load up. There we go. Now the black with the siding. I like this one a lot. I I, like I, I think it's very it's very nice. Once again, these are they're go the market they're going after is somebody the true off road market now. Unless you want a Wrangler or a Bronco, there the the off road market. Wait till you see the next Forerunner. The off road market is going to the or the the off road SUV body on frame SUVs. This is what they're going to. They're they want to build something that's really capable, but guess what? They want to sell a lot of these things, and SUVs are super, super profitable for any manufacturer. Um, but I think this one would hold up a little better to to dirty situations. Mm -hmm. um, thing two I liked, and this was in the in the Terra. I like the smaller air vents. I just they I, I don't I, I kind of like that they're sort of hidden. Like they're obviously going to blow cool air or hot air on you, but I just like that they're hidden. Um, Anything, anything else here stand out? Oh, thank you, Flytrap. Thank you. Um, anything else, Kelly, stand out to you about that you like or dislike about this? Um, I like the push button because I don't have push button in my Xterra. She misses that from the Titan. 
and and the controllers on the steering wheel. I know that sounds. You can get that in other models. Don't get me wrong. Like, but I do miss that comparatively. And, to and my yours Xterra. being a base X yeah, model. Yeah, mine was an X model. I actually asked him if we could get a replacement steering wheel to put in mine so that I could have all the controls. Um, I'm sure there's heated mirrors. Right. I don't see them, but I bet there are. Um, uh, these are powered mirrors, by the way, too, if I remember right. I think nice. they, they'll close on their own as well. See, I need all the little... See, he called me a snob, and that's what it is. It's a snob. I want snob and capability. Mm -hmm. So, like... So, basically, we're going to Toyota 4Runner is what you're saying. <laughs> Um, no, no, but, but I, I get that. And, and you going from the Titan, going from your Xterra, we yes. parked your Xterra and it was just our weekend warrior mm -hmm. going to the Titan, which was your daily. Mm -hmm. You got leather seats, you got heated seats, you got all these, these, no, it was a 51 or $2,000 truck compared right. to what you were in. Um, even if you retail, retail yours, I think yours would have retailed around that time at about $26,000. When we bought it, or when it would have been when bought. It, yeah, when it would have been brand new to a 51000 Like, obviously, that's a Twice wide that's a wide range of, of options that you're capable of getting. Oh, for but, sure. But um, the only thing I can say about the steering wheel, and once again, this is... What are we looking at here? That's the AC. That's your dual, dual no, climate control. No, 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 control. down. Uh, there's your hill descent controls oh, and stuff okay. like that. Um, now going, I think the one thing that Nissan is doing and all these cars are becoming little computers now, speaker, mm -hmm. Bose sound system, oh. this thing. um, Fancy. I think that they're getting so many buttons in these things. Now it's getting ridiculous on the steering wheel. Now they since they I are, would agree with that. since they're little computers, like it's a must. I don't know where you would put the keypad for all this stuff, but that's the one thing it, I know it's not distracting if you're working, once you learn it, once you learn it yeah. using your thumbs, it's not distracting, but that's the only thing from that. Uh, now this being the leather, once again, I like, I think this looks great. Uh, the, a little busy, I think, but it yeah, looks there's good. there's a lot of lines there. It looks good. Obviously, Nissan's known for cup holders. You know, there's one in the door there. There's two there. I can't believe there's not like five cup holders right in this, in this area. There would be two. There's two in mine. Well, I'm exaggerating. There's probably two in the drop yeah, down there. Yeah, I'm sure, oh, <gasps> Sorry. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's cup holders if we could pull that down back there. Who knows how many cup holders that third row has. Like, <laughs> Nissan is no, like, if you're a thirsty person, Nissan's your brand because <laughs> they have the cup holder thing taken care of. Um, overall, Do we know if the rear window opens? On this? No, it does not. Um, Sorry, this is what you get when you get a show with me. Yeah. That's one thing, our Toyota that we had that you love. Oh, yeah. That Toyota does well. Honestly, we were on the test drive, and I was just like, meh. And then the guy showed me that the or Dave showed me, I think that mm -hmm. the that the window went down, and I went, "All right, sold." Yeah, yeah she, just to be able to roll that you window. You had a, down, a Sequoia for what? How long? Like six months, maybe. We bought it Mother's Day. We sold it for my Xterra, um, or yeah, in <laughs> September. Yeah. So, <laughs> but that was the one feature she was really sad about. It was. Um, yeah. Overall, one to ten, Kelly. What would you give the interior? Um, I'd give the interior probably a nine. Really? Mm -hmm. What's what's I like the it. what's the one thing that you're saying that kind of takes you away out of it from um, a 10. honestly probably the 80 bajillion buttons on the steering wheel yeah because is, it just is that like i need to be able to change the station i need to be able to turn the volume up i like my cruise control um and to maybe maybe change the input but that's it i don't need maybe some blue maybe bluetooth to be able to use your phone but <laughs> she keeps adding buttons no up. too many buttons Shut well up. i need this, Shut this, up. this but no i don't need like, we can see there, there's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, mm -hmm. 13, 14, 15 on and, one side. And I, you probably don't remember when I had the Versa. Same steering wheel, same button layout and everything. And, and, and a lot of that. your cruise control and your adaptive cruise control is on this. So there on the right-hand side by the big square is where your adaptive usually is, where you can tell it you want to be closer when it part, it slows you down or further gotcha. away from the car, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I, I don't need 30 buttons on my steering yeah. wheel. I, I'm going to give the leather version of this, I'm going to give it a 9 as well, because I think it's clean. Mm -hmm. I, I do. And if I remember right, this this uh, mirror is digital now, too. Oh, nice. Does which, it have the backup cam in it? Mm -hmm. This has trail cam, by the way, too. And uh, oh. that and it's it's not the high-end trail cam. It's, it's got a front, and you can see the side. And for your parking assist and stuff, you can see the cameras that but way. But it's encouraging trail driving. Yes, yes. but overall, I, I would give this thing. Now, how many patches could we get on here? Maybe about oh. 50. Oh, and I can tell you this. Size. Look, Kelly. What is that? That's a DVD. That's a what? TV, yeah. And oh. look, look at the vents right there. Hmm. So this thing's going to keep you cool, too, and there's your controls for those vents. Well, it's platinum. Yeah. Well, 
in, in this where this market is too, even into Indonesian kind of Asian markets, mm-hmm. you if you have AC, you probably want to use it there. Oh sure. Uh, but I I like it a lot. I um, I uh, you know, I, there's nothing about it that uh, I can uh, kind of fuss about. I honestly going to the outside. I like the outside. I like the headlights. I will say this: they're a little Toyota like. Um, but that's okay. Uh, the forerunner or fourth runner, as they call it in, in, uh, overseas, it, uh, Hey, don't, I'm, I'm talking here, woman, please don't and? be, don't be moving me around. And, um, but into the screen, but so the titanium version you can get with the differential lock, the rear locker, which is okay. nice, which would, we, you know, we would call the pro four X package. Uh, it doesn't, I don't think it offers any more lift or anything, but you are sticking with the basic wheels, um, other than that, I don't think there's. I don't. I don't know that. I would think there's probably a basic skid plate package, but we'll get more of the details as as they they bring it out. Wireless charging though, which is kind of ah. I think going to be a standard. It's going to come close to being standard in a lot of vehicles anymore. That people just expect that. Well, because the phones are wireless. Charging, well, that and anyway. it's less distracting when you're driving. Yeah. You just pop it in For there. Sure. And now off road. Well, I, th- I think. Nightmare. Yeah, off road. I think it'd be a nightmare. Uh, and you know, Ford with their Bronco is going to offer a a in their high package uh, a, a way to wireless charge it. I can't only imagine like the phone bouncing around. And, oh yeah. Um, Especially with the open windows, open doors. Right now here's the thing they could have kept with the uh, diesel in uh, Saudi Arabia, but they like, they like petrol. They like, they like gasoline. And uh, so Nissan's going to offer the 2.5 liter V4 165 horsepower motor. Now let's put that in perspective. Nissan in the 2000 Xterra came out with a 161 horsepower or two horsepower, if I remember right, mm. in a six-cylinder. Now, this little four-cylinder is going to have just a few more ponies than the, than the original Xterra, but the name of the game now is fuel economy. Like, that's the name of the game. Uh, off-road capabilities is always is secondary now, like, even though it is probably very capable. It's that's not the name of the game, and a lot of probably the the style of off roading they do is desert style. So you want higher RPMs, like sure. you, you don't really need the low end torque like You're we, talking a different market. yeah, like we do here. But I this I was a little disappointed that they put the smaller four cylinder in this thing. Now the Gen One you could get a four cylinder in, so it's not out of line. I know a lot of people they they seem to uh, reading today on some of the people fussing about. Um, options. Well, you know, the they had a V6, and a lot of people, I think, forget the fact that Nissan did offer a base model with a four-cylinder. And believe it or not, and you may not know this, you could actually get roll-up windows in the Gen 1s. You could get a base, base model, and it had roll-up windows. Hmm. Uh, You're talking hand manual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand, hand jobs. Um, oh, Lord. But... Yeah. They uh, price wise, like you were saying, around thirty six thousand dollars for the platinum. That's if that was in the United States, that's very like because oh my god, retail prices on all vehicles have just the past ten years skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. Like for whatever reason, I don't know if it's all the tech they're adding or what. Prices have just went nuts. So if Nissan could bring this, obviously it would be labeled different. They would have a right. Pro Four X package, but at Thirty thousand dollars to thirty-five thousand dollars. That's a very now a reasonable price mm-hmm. because I know Ford with the Bronco saying twenty-eight thousand dollars, twenty-nine thousand dollars, which is in line with Wrangler for a two-door. <clears throat> you can't buy it for that. You add one thing to it, and it's like you're at thirty-two. And this, you're getting a a what was that four or five seven seater? Yep. For for the price of uh, you know of the the Wranglers and stuff, and you're still getting off-road capability. Now, yeah. You, can't pull the doors off and all the fun things that off-road people like doing but i think i think as this thing sits with a couple tweaks to the the outside of it i think nissan would tear it up because there's a lot of people who are turned off by the rogue I would agree. even though the rogue's got a lot of seating that they you know the rogue is very it, you know for even suv it's very low it's all about miles per gallon this would fit perfect in between the rogue and the pathfinder yeah, it gives you a body on frame because this is a body on frame SUV. It would give you that kind of hey, we're still capable, mm-hmm. and they could drop this in the U.S. market really, really quickly. Um, there was one more thing I was gonna go into the the wheels on this thing though, are, to me, are just horrible. Those are that's that's just like 
I don't know. It's just like something, a machine shop, just like it was a chunk of metal they had left over. And somebody at <laughs> Nissan was like, Hey man, that looks good. Can you re replicate that? And the guy like chewing on a cigar is like, yeah, man, I can reproduce that. Lord. And, uh, but, um, Tell us how you really feel. but I like the, the grill, the V motion. I really do like that a lot. I, I like that. It's, it's, it's bold, but I just, these in, in between, I would have liked to seen it go back to the kind of the black plastic, like the, the traditional Xterra had, um, this thing comes with LED lights, complete LEDs. So, so you know you're gonna see the world with these things. Mm -hmm. And I I don't I haven't read it, but I know in the U.S. market it would have guarantee it would have the auto dimming for for bright light, your headlight assist, and all that. Um, so Kelly, outside of this, what what do you rate this thing on a scale to one to ten? Really, you're gonna make me rate it? I'm gonna make you rate this thing. And I'll, I'm going to get to your questions in just a minute, everybody. I'll say five. Really? Yeah. What's the pluses to this thing that you like about it on the outside? That it has the nostalgia with the X on the front. Um, yeah. Because that is kind of telling. Mm -hmm. um, How many people are going to take that middle line out of this on that rear hatch when they buy uh, one? A whole lot. I guarantee you that little, <laughs> that little dash goes away real quick. Um, I mean... It's not absolutely terrible, but that's like the redeeming quality for me is the Xterra or the X on the front. Do you see this thing as right now as a competitor to the Forerunner? Do you still think that old Forerunner looks better? No, I think the old Forerunner looks better. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I would buy a Forerunner over this one. Really? Mm -hmm. Even though probably priced ten thousand dollars difference. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's well. just not aggressive enough. Well, what is going on, Toyota Nation? <laughs> <laughs> um. I uh I I like the Terra design, uh and there's uh I'll I'll let me let me get out of this for a minute and I'll I'll pull this up and see if I can find it for you um no maybe ah maybe if you can there it is there it is there we there we go <laughs> uh, but I'll let me let me pull up some some Terra because I think I think for uh for our us American audience the uh the Terras went. Oops, stupid auto check. <laughs> you don't want the terrain. Nope. <laughs> nope, not at all. Uh, but I think once you see these things are lifted, and I'll, always people see the base models and go, well, you never do anything with that. See, I'll um, take that Forerunner right there. No, no Forerunners. Yeah. No, shh, wrong, wrong, right chat, wrong chat. That's All Terrain Nation. And if I'm you sorry. haven't yet, go like and subscribe <laughs> to All Terrain Nation. That was not planned, by the way. It was not, but it's our it's our channel that we talk about every, anything with four wheels, we talk about it. But uh, hey, there's Rook's old, uh, old uh, Xterra. Let's see. So don't run away by my comments. Let yes, see. let's see. Uh, Gosh. Probably screwing this up. Probably. Uh, and here, so so this is the original. And I'm I'm gonna click to this real quick. It's a it's a web article, but um, you can kind of see where they came from with the the upgraded version of the Terra. Uh, this is definitely Gen. This is Gen three Xterra all the way. The way the 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 lights and the the bottom grill see, and everything was. See, this is the better option to me. Well, and I've I've said for a long time that Nissan, this is what they should bring to the United States. I but... would give this one a seven. Really? Yeah. Just from the the front of it. Yeah. Let's see if there's anything else anything else fun here. Wow, there you go. Um, because it looks more like an Xterra. Well, this is very uh, Navara like the hood and everything about yeah. this is very Navara the the their version of the Frontier, but and there's the interior of the previous Which gen. Which is similar. Uh, steering wheel's a steering lot less, different. uh, a lot less cluttered for you, mm -hmm. but everything else is pretty much, it's pretty much just upgraded versions mm -hmm. of this. Uh, and there's the tail. I like Terra being down there a lot better. Well, that's, that's cause that's where it is on ours. Yeah. Or is it on the right hand side? We uh, took it off. I don't know. Remember. I was going to say we took it off. I can't remember. Uh, but while we're doing this, um, Carrie, which side is it on? The Xterra. Do you still have it on yours? No, hers may be different than ours anyways. Oh, that's right. I think yours was on the... It was, it was on the, the left. Right. No, it was on the left, and then the model is on the right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it would have said four-wheel drive on yours. Anyway, so, guys, give me just a second, and I'm going to get right to your questions. I want to find – there's some pictures of these things lifted, and once you see them lifted, they're they're completely different looking. Like, it's it's kind of night, night and – Try Asian Terra lifted instead of lift kit. Am I spelling this right? Yep. 
Let's add Nissan to that. Lifted. <sighs> Come on, damn it. Uh, where's one at? There's a lot of Wint Windrock pictures there. No, nope. no, nope, that's not lifted. Oh man, this is like this is that's like a. Uh, Wait, was that? Is that one lifted? No, no, nope, same one. Ah, anyways, well, I'll I'll find it eventually and we'll get to it. But um, you put some some meaty tires on these things and a little bit of lift, and they they really do look good. And when the Terra came out, there I have it on one of my one of my uh, socials that um. Sorry, I'm losing my controls here. Uh, but I have it on one of my socials. One of them lifted. It's really, really cool. Um, but so first off, and I'm going to get your questions. Everybody that's on here, all 74, how many we got on here? One through 10, everybody post up what their overall opinion is of this thing. And, and don't just because you, it's not the previous generation Xterra. Be honest with if it's a good looking, if you find it to be a fairly good looking vehicle, just rate it that way. I mean, you know, it, yeah, it's it's not it's not what we all kind of you know thought the the it should be. But and uh, I'll be curious to see what everybody rates it as. And um, let's see if I can get my my controls back to this. We'll uh, give me a second. Get to your questions while we're. I can't because I can't scroll. Let me start from the bottom up. That one lifted. Where where are we at? That one. Uh, no, no. Mm, kind of. Um, gosh. It's killing her now because she wants to see one lifted. That was not lifted. Mm -mm. Was we'll get to it. There's Instagram pages for this stuff. All right, so I'm going to scroll up through here, and uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in on this. I Seriously, I'm definitely, I want to know where everybody would rank this thing. Uh, so I'm starting at the very top, so thank you, uh, everybody, for being a part of this. Let's see. Oh, uh, thanks, Carrie. Let's see. Uh, Joe I Taylor, like I really like it. Uh, put a 3.8 liter in a Pro Forex or Nismo, and I'd buy it. I'd, oh, definitely, if it were to come to the United States, it would have to have the 3.8 with the 9-speed transmission. This one here is getting a seven speed, probably the old, old seven speed the Titan kind of was using, because um, <clears throat> that's really for a truck based. That's about the only thing. I'm not sure. I think maybe the previous Terra had a seven speed as well. Um, let's see. Uh, Trav says I miss I missed the pics from the Middle East launch. Uh, I can't answer that. Let's see. Uh, Smitty's Garage says it's so lame we won't even VK swap it. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna I'm gonna piss some people off with a VK swap video one of these days because me and Danny's debated this thing and I just don't see where it's worth it. Uh Ryan, if you're still in here, I love my hat. Thank you, sir. That was uh Nismo gave me that. I was we were having some fun with them and uh I think when uh your trips? No, when uh we were we did a review on the the Dually Titan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Bree brought us uh, brought us a bunch of Nismo gear and I like it a lot. Uh, let's see, uh, OX or 06 X store. Let's see, Dave, when is the 400 Z coming out? Uh, the 400 Z will be out late next fall unless COVID delays everything. And if we're all, you know, being honest with ourselves that we all see shutdowns coming in our near future. So I don't know. In Tennessee works. It, it, our uh, cases are rising. So we're expecting Schools shut down again. Yep. So uh, uh, the plants were in Tennessee and Canton are still they're still going, but the problem is is we could still go here in the United States, but if some of the suppliers outside of this this state or Mexico or wherever mm -hmm. get, get uh, shut down, then it kind of screws up everything. Uh, let's see. Joe, yeah, I'm the wife. Yep. Let's see. Uh, JQ, I always loved the Xterra. I almost bought a 15 before my Titan. I just needed uh, to tow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean we've towed we towed the Gen One. You talk about a towing nightmare. We used, <laughs> we used to tow our eighteen and a half foot boat with that thing, and yeah. once again it had a, like a hundred and sixty horsepower. And then I lifted it and put larger tires on it and hadn't regeared it. Uh, there was where we go to the lake. There was one spot coming home, not going there, but coming <laughs> home. Remember, I'd have to floor it, and we wouldn't come to a dead stop. But you definitely felt that uh, like the little poor little truck going help. And if help. you were going down the hill. You better hold on yeah. because it is not stopping. Yeah, it was going to push. It was pushing it. Yep. Let's see. Um, uh, see if I can find some questions here. 
Uh, JQ says, okay, a three inch lift, black wheels, uh, bushel lacquer flares, roof rack, and then I'd rock it. Well, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Of, and I think that's with the Xterra crowd, that's part of the problem is like we were saying earlier, we all look at these things through rose colored glasses mm -hmm. and I mean, everybody sees potential, but sometimes there's a lot more potential. Like tires, just putting meaty looking tires on it changes the vehicle's look so much. Yeah, but I have a struggle seeing it in the picture that you have on the screen now. Mm -hmm. I have I have a struggle going, where does the bumper go? Where does the aftermarket bumper right. go? Well, I think I think you would have to cut. That's what I'm saying. You would have cut to above. Cut. It would be and a with unique mine, looking you bumper. Have to cut. My, with mine, we didn't have to cut it. So... Right. Right. That's, that's a challenge for me, too. Uh, let's see. But Nissan doesn't, they don't think about that that perspective of it. Right, so. right. And um, um, did you, well, you thanked Flytrap, but did you adjust? Oh, uh, see, Flytrap says, I'll cage out the, the BNC pillars and remotor my second gen. I don't need a Pathfinder with a different name. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? I would, they could have called that a Pathfinder, and probably people would have been like, okay. I think if that was the next generation Pathfinder, that people would have been probably. like, like okay, it's getting back to its roots, you know. It's I still it's that. still very capable, and uh, I think you know that's a great point of of I really do think that they should have called that a Pathfinder. Yeah, it looks more like a Pathfinder to me, and that's what I said at the very beginning. Right. Is I feel like it's more Pathfinder than it is X Terra. Oh, it's X <laughs> Terra. Uh, let's see, any more is out here. Uh, uh, why is the steering wheel on that. the left? Yeah. Um, if I remember right, the Saudi market, they they are on the left hand side drive. Now, um, some of the Asian markets are on the right hand side, but uh, even I believe where they, I could be wrong, but in the Philippines, I believe it's the left hand side drive. I and I'm I'm trying to remember the stuff. I I'm not a global expert. Trust me. Uh, let's see. I guess I'm just too much, too old for Fogey for the new models these days. Um, uh, yeah. Misa, Misa, honey, uh, 165 will get you zero to 60 in three minutes. <laughs> That's about like the the Gen One. Uh, you Is get it on CVT. No, these are real transmissions in this thing, and I've seen a lot of that too. People that didn't know anything about uh, uh, this this particular style of vehicle. Uh, I've seen a lot. I seen there was something on a, a Frontier thing I was reading today where people that don't know Nissan was like, "Yeah, but it's got that damn CVT." That's what. That's how bad the CVTs ruin Nissan's credibility <laughs> in a lot of these things because people just assume it's everything now. Uh, um, there was one. What did I see? What's the difference between this and the Pathfinder? Uh, Pathfinder is a unibody construction. This is a body on frame. Uh, you're getting a live rear full solid axle in the back of this thing. Pathfinder is completely independent suspension. And uh, Pathfinder is a lot wider. It's kind of a pig compared to this thing in size, size wise. Oh, we're getting oh, some ratings skipped. now. Oh, we're, let's you see. Be right here. Yep, you're in the right place. Put a uh, put the front end of a new Frontier on uh, the US Xterra. I could go with that. Let's see. I could probably get on board with that too. And I think it would be slightly different too. I I do think that you would get kind of the new aggressive look that the Frontier is going to have. Let's see. So uh, Kevin says he's giving it a seven. Omar gives it an eight point five. Joe Taylor, wow, that's bold of you, Joe, uh, for a seven on that. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Steve, Steven giving the exterior seven, but the interior solid nine. Gator says a nine. Uh, Carrie Beasley says personally, personal opinion a six. Market approach is an eight. Carrie, that's not what I asked for. I asked for your opinion. <laughs> I'm going to stick with your six. She did. She gave you her personal opinion, six. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's a lot of sevens there. Uh, Rim says seven. Uh, oh, six says seven. Uh, eight with a V six. I, I could see that. Um, let's see. Any more, any more. There's a seven. Uh, Mr. Nobody, channel for Nissan lovers? Of course this channel's for Nissan lovers. That's why we have the Nissan Nation Productions. Uh, formerly the Nissan Nation Podcast, by the way. Um, let's see. Why is the car so low? Okay. Uh, Mr. Nobody, really? Nissan sucks. Always going to suck. CVT. Well, Mr. Nobody, I'm, I'm sorry for your opinion on that. Um, damn it. Now my email's going crazy at the wrong time, Kelly. I didn't do it. The wrong time. Oh, I can't do that from here. Joe, if you would take care of that problem, I'd appreciate that. Mr. Joe Taylor, Monterey extraordinaire. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no CVT in these things. Um, 
I I really do though. I see. I'm surprised at the numbers. Everybody's like, I hate it, but mm-hmm. the numbers they're giving it are actually fairly high high numbers. I would have thought for the way people were like are trashing it online and stuff, yeah. I would have thought they would have been like, no, oh, that's a five. I yeah. thought we would have seen a lot of low fives. Um, I think the design is it's modern, and we cannot like yes, the Broncos, the throwback to the past. You know, Wranglers never really changed in its design. Um, Things go forward, guys and gals. They, the, the look has to change or else if you're not always moving forward, you're moving backwards, basically. I have no problem with that, but I just don't feel like there was any imagination in it. Like, I don't feel like I feel like it looks like wow, lots I of hope, other things we see. I hope Alfonso's not watching this, Joe Taylor. I'm just saying. No, we've had this discussion that Nissan, they need a new design, head design. Yeah, team. because I, I'm sorry, it just doesn't, and I wasn't knocking on anybody, just for the record. I'm just saying that I feel like this was easy. Like, this was an easy well, image. Re- and and we're kind of, you got to look at this as a refresh, too. Like, you've seen the older version of the, you've seen this right here. But it doesn't look fresh to me. No, but what I'm saying is, you've seen that, this is a refresh of that, so... So you kind of you kind of have to look at it from that that standpoint of the this is the the refresh of this right here you know look at the mirrors same mirrors the roof line everything about that's the same uh, fenders other than this front area pretty much all the same look at the fog lights there and look over here Kelly it's it's a no, C I get it but I'm just saying from from that perspective it looks whoever said grocery getter was was right on for me because I just don't feel like it like this looks like so many so many things out there that are already in the market. Hey Tim. Oh, we got we got royalty tonight. We got Mr. Tim with pickup trucks and SUV talks and Tim, we've got you had a lady on your stream the other night. I was like, Tim can't <laughs> he, he he just learned how to do a live stream. I can't have him one up in me on that. <laughs> oh, a- that's why I was invited. It was a competition. I see. <laughs> yeah. I see. Let's see. I, I think I might be able to find us one of these lifted chairs. There, there we go. What did All you right. put in there? Oh, Philippines. Uh huh. Let's see. This is one I've seen. Damn it. All right. Let's bring this over here. All right. There you go, guys. There's an idea. Now this is photoshopped. This is this can before when they released the tear originally. This was some photoshops, but it gives you a lot of idea of the potential now. I could get behind that. See, now you see potential of what this thing could look like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. There might be... Nope. Ah. All right. And you lost it. I did. And so there you see a little bit of the potential of this thing. Let me uh, see if I can find us another one real quick. Oh, there. Here. This is my... Ah, oh, damn it. They've cut off. There it is. That's, That's YouTube. No, but there's a there's a picture of that that looks just like. Is it that one? That looks to be cut off. We'll, we'll click. We're gonna click some buttons here. It's YouTube. Oh, you're killing me! You're killing me, Googles. You're supposed to find these things for me. The Googles. Uh, and believe it. There's a big there's a big Terra Clubs over in the Philippines for these things now too. <laughs> like they have their own little meets and stuff. Isn't it's pretty. Cute? It's pretty cool. Um, oh, let's see. Kelly gets some, gets. Some, Read some of these questions for me here. Um, do, 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 do. I think if you saw this in person, it would look better. Will they put the 3.8 from the Frontier if they ever bring it to the U.S.? Yeah, I would think so. I, 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 just because Nissan's not full of motor options, and I, I don't think a four-cylinder with that low horsepower would cut it here in the United States at all. I, I don't see a reason where where uh, no combine not comparing Kelly to Jill. <laughs> um, no, I, I think I think we are the land of uh, I've debated this with Danny a little bit. You always have to have more horsepower. Everything has to have more horsepower. And you can't go from a 260 horsepower or 261 horsepower SUV to a 161 horsepower and people like you guys are already upset that it doesn't look like the uh, old Xterra. Can you imagine if it came out this and a weak motor like but we've evolved our conversation here it's we have not necessarily that it doesn't look like the old xterra it's the fact that it wasn't imaginative enough because i think when the xterra came out it had a new view to it like it looked different it wasn't like everything else out there and so i think that that's the problem is that we're used to something that looks a little different 
and yet you take it and make it look like everything else that's out there. Right. Here's uh this was about two years ago. It was uh on one of the auto shows overseas that they did. I uh, that looks cool to me. Yeah. Need some beat once again. Need some meaty tires. Would would make it look a little bit better, but um, like there's a lot of potential there. You know, like mm-hmm. the and wraps change everything. Now you know that from your mm-hmm. your exterior. Now when we wrapped yours, that was just like it was just night and day different. You know. For sure. Uh, let's see what else we uh can we find. See if you can a- any other questions here, Kelly. Um, Carrie says it looks like every other SUV. I agree with Kelly. Definitely would like to see a little more creativity given to the Xterra. Amen, sister. Um, his side prof- profile the Pajero. Uh oh, the Pajero. Pajero is called. Where are we at? Omar. All right. Uh, yes, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Which is Nissan's little midsize SUV in uh, South American market, I believe. I could be wrong on that. Um, Hi, Wayne says no. This needs to be a two point three turbo diesel. That would bump the horsepower from one eighty nine to three thirty one, or to one eighty nine and three thirty one torque. Uh, but the problem diesel in America, like. You guys don't want to hear that either. Diesel in America is dead, especially for Nissan. Nissan's been burnt so badly by uh, by diesel <laughs> that with the uh, what we got going on here. So I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find some more pictures. It wants you to join the group. Yeah, I don't uh, want to join. The, I'm not a joiner. Ryan says you give it a ten out of a ten. Ryan, where are we at? Ryan Birch. All right. Nice. Nice. Um, ATX Trent says looks considerably larger than the 15 Xterra. Um, Tim says, why does Dave have on a stocking camp ha- cap? Hashtag wimp. Hey, that's correct. <laughs> it is hashtag wimp here. Uh, let's, let's do a little editing on this thing real quick so we're not looking at everything here. Any other questions? Stephen Kelly? Curry says, yes, I can dig it. It closely resembled a four, forerunner, but it doesn't look bad lifted. Um, High Plane says rate at five with a V4 with a 2.3 turbo diesel rate at an eight. Okay. Um, Joe says this project was designed by Ken Lee. Tim says no offense to Danny, but oh, hey, Kelly, really dressing up for the show. (laughs) (laughs) You know it. That's what I do. Uh, Robert says bloated Pathfinder and Omar says Mitsubishi Pajero. Yes. Yes. Um, which supposedly Mitsubishi is actually going to the next generation Nissan four wheel drives. They're supposed to be working on that, that it'll all be Mitsubishi, uh, based, uh, if that partnership actually, if, if Nissan continues to own controlling interest of Mitsubishi, cause they've been trying to sell that off. Uh, final thoughts. If, if we could ever get the, if you could get one in the United States and then the SEMA guys get a hold of it and they start doing stuff like this, it's a hit. Yeah. Like, like, it, and I've said this for several videos now, Nissan, and I said this about a year ago, Nissan could beat Toyota to the punch with the next Overland SUV. And because Forerunner, Tim would know better, but I think Forerunner's not due till 2022, 23. So they would have a whole, basically two years that they could, in, in Nissan Nismo off-road, you've heard it, Nismo, Nis, can I speak? <laughs> I haven't even had all my drink. I haven't drank at all. But Nismo Off Road is is coming, and um, they're interested in these types of builds, and they want to sell you these kind of things. And they could, like that, they could mm-hmm. be on on the cusp of all this. And I'm not sure. And you're you're not talking any really extra stamping costs. Mm-hmm. Uh, they could Canton, Mississippi, right now has the capacity to build these things. They sent the Xterra and Frontier down from Smyrna, Tennessee. They sent it down to Canton because Canton needed something to build. Basically, they weren't selling a ton of Titans, and Altima doesn't keep that thing alive down there. Um, but th- this would give I, I initially out of the gate. I, I would think that they if they could offer a off road package, yes. you know, obviously no, you're not getting these tires and wheels, but something like a, a BF Goodrich KO2, something like that. It looks aggressive, still nice, on, you know, nice on the road. I, I think they sell 2500 to 3500 a month, which would be for Nissan needed because there's a lot of profit built in these things. Um, but if Nissan could figure out how to utilize Nismo, not just in the aftermarket, after you buy your vehicle and it rolls off the property, 
and you could actually make it go, hey, I want to order it, and I want it to be put together yeah. like this before well, I roll it off the lot. That and, could be a huge market change. Of course, and you could, you could, uh, you know, I talked about having a Nismo version of uh, the Frontier. You know, we I broke the news on that a long time ago, and I still believe that is coming. Everything I've been told that is a year away, that you could, and I said it in a video that I did about the three or the 400Z. So you could have a 400Z as your sports car. Mm -hmm. You could have a Nismo uh, off-road Frontier, and then you could have a Nismo off-road SUV. Mm -hmm. You've got something for everybody. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they're going to, for the Nismo brand, you're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You're going to make some money off that nameplate. Right. And, um, you know, make sure it's a little capable. It can't just be Nismo of the past where they've, they've thrown, you know, it's like the old Nismo Frontiers were a locker, and that was about it, really. It was basically the predecessor to the Pro 4X. Um, it would have to mean something. Obviously, we don't need all the la the roof, the the ladder or the shovels and stuff on there. But they could do it from the factory, uh, a flat basket like that. You could do a snorkel kit from the factory. A lot of a lot of companies now are putting snorkels on their vehicles and be done with it. Um, uh, let's see. Tim says I have a better chance of winning the lottery before a new Forerunner <laughs> comes out. Um, yeah, you know. Tim, the the Forerunner does because of Toyota. They don't seem to get the crap that Nissan does for having older vehicles. But the Forerunner's been out that that chassis has been out for what well over ten years now. Yeah. Um. Now they've unlike Nissan, they have refreshed it. Uh. But that's yeah. that's a whole nother show. Um. Guys, this is this is the potential. I wanted everybody to kind of wanted to end the show with showing you that there's potential there. For the, something to look cool, just see past the the soccer mommy part of it, and you know aftermarket. That's the cool thing about aftermarket and bumper companies and all that. You give those guys six months after one of these come out. There's 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 plenty of you want to make your your vehicle look you know like you know that you want it to look. There's plenty of options for that, whether it be hefty or anybody. Like there's a lot of new and upcoming companies that would want to do that and you know Z1 would love to oh, get yeah. would love to uh get one get of these on the on one. yeah put it on the dyno and um have a little bit of fun with that let's see any other questions we've just over an hour and uh I appreciate everybody being on here tonight um I hit Kelly oh thank Aww. you Tim that's that payback Tag from, you're it. yeah <laughs> payback <laughs> uh from Tim let's see uh but Oh yeah, Ian. I would the three. My my thoughts is you put the three liter, the twin turbo, uh, in all three of these. It can happen, but they won't do. It. They won't do it, especially in this. They would never do that. But I've often said go the GM route of Cyclone Typhoon. But you could do the version of off road like that, and I think it would sell. Uh, let's see any other questions on here. The Fort the Fort Runner is uh, smaller than the the Fort Runner. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, High Plains they could they want to put it in there. They can put it in there. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, thank you, Joe Taylor. Let's see. I own an eleven Pro Four X. Uh, thing thing needs a diesel and a front locker. Now I do. I've said this for a while that the <laughs> The Pro 4X of the Frontier better come with a front locker, or the Nismo version better come with a front locker. Um, let's see. Carrie says, can we have Kelly on the show more? Carrie, it's honestly, he tries to get me on more. <laughs> he does try to get me on the show more, so I'll try. Um, Kelly, final thoughts? Um, Tara, yes. X <laughs> dash Tara... Meh. Yeah? Yeah. Even though you see the potential that it could be. Because that's the potential of the Terra. It's not the potential of that. Same There's too much same difference. Vehicle. Same vehicle. I'm sorry. It's a little too different for me. Well, it's I guess it's a case of he said, she said on this one. Um, let's see. Uh, girl power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrie. <laughs> um, uh, diesel. I Diesel. I Diesel's. Nissan's been burnt by diesel in the United States, guys. I do not see a... Unless Nissan were to bring a Titan out at a, a true 2500, 3500, you're not getting another diesel from Nissan. Uh, plus, it's just with California. Now we have a new uh, president that leans the other way. California is going to go really crazy with their restrictions. And whatever California does, guys, 
you know, Trump there for a while was fighting California on, on can they legally do whatever they're doing to restrict vehicles. It's a whole new game. I don't care what your politics is. It's a whole new game, and there's going to be a lot of patting each other on the back. So diesel, diesel, and diesel is not the end all be all. If you're not towing something regular, it's a waste of your money and there's time. There's a lot of money from upkeep, from a maintenance perspective. Mm-hmm. We actually we were talking about what the the oil change on the on the diesel Titan was like, like stupid, that. stupid. Like I don't like paying. Yeah, the 60, 80, 60, 80 bucks that we do to do our own, let alone a hundred or four hundred dollars to do an oil change. That's, that doesn't work for me. Yep. Uh, Ramesh says, "What is the topic for Friday?" Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some more tarot talk if Danny's involved. You know, Danny hasn't got to respond to this yet. He did poke the bear on my video uh, that I posted late last night, and thank you guys for uh, for everybody if you've watched that video. I do appreciate that. That was. I had that in the back burner, but I had couldn't get confirmation that they were actually using the Xterra name till late, and uh, I had to double double check with a. I had two sources on that, and I had wanted to double check, and uh, sure enough, it was right. Also, I want to say thank you to our buddy there, Joe Taylor. Uh, Joe Taylor is Nissan underscore Community underscore News. I think I just nailed that, Joe Taylor. <laughs> um, go over on Instagram and follow Joe. Joe. Joe follows the designers, man. Joe's going to be something in the car industry one day, and uh, I would tip my hat to you, but uh, it's on my he head. He doesn't have it. Uh, but uh, go follow Joe's Joe's channel, and our buddy over there, Ronald, over in uh, Hawaii, has a uh, uh, Nissan Hawaii Nation, if I remember right. Go follow those guys, man. They uh, Actually, those guys are they're digging in. They're doing a lot of grunt work and finding some things out that I don't even get to find out. So, uh, <laughs> and, and Joe, Joe, let's get you on the show very soon, man. You're, you're a good dude. And I appreciate all your help. So from all things, Nissan infinity, I guess we could throw a Datsun or something in there too. I don't, I don't know. Uh, wherever you're watching us, <laughs> what? <Uh-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> Pickup truck plus SUV talk with Tim. Tim, you changed your name because I could never say it right, I think. Um, <laughs> it's all about him. Do you see? It's all about him. So from all things Nissan here in my studios to wherever you're watching us around the globe, we're still making changes back here. I don't know if anybody noticed the, the shelf and the, the Christmas decorations, but this is your Nissan Nation, and what are we, Kelly? We're out. Peace, everybody. We will see you all Friday, 8 p.m. on that one. And uh, spread the love, smash the like button, and until uh, then, ba da